So, good afternoon. I'm Mark Stevens, Assistant Director of Operational Highways from Suffolk County Council. Um, during this presentation, I'll be running through uh, some of the challenges that are faced by Suffolk County Council as we look at the current uh, position and the future uh, in, in relation to the amount of funding we have available to look after our local road network uh, down here in Suffolk. Uh, this is actually a presentation um, I've given in the past uh, to government officials uh, to help clarify the situation for Suffolk, but also to hopefully reflect the situation across the country as well. Um, so there's a number of slides involved in this, uh, and I'll try and get through this as uh, quickly as I possibly can, uh, but hopefully not missing thing on the route. So in terms of the coverage, uh, I'm looking at the, the actual allocations we have at the moment, the extent to which our funding has been going down over a period of time, primarily going back to 2010-11. Uh, looking at what we've got in terms of our existing assets, how we split out our revenue funding from the MHCLG, how we apportion the uh, capital funding from the Department for Transport, and in some respects, there's a bit of a blend from what has been revenue slitting into capital now, which is a concern for everybody and probably a consistent situation for across the country. Um, I'll then explore the correct funding levels from my, uh, my perspective, uh, and I've looked at three different scenarios as to what that might potentially be based upon uh, Suffolk's position here. And then I'll look at some scenario testing in terms of uh, validating uh, what the different funding levels would be uh, in terms of road condition overall. So hopefully this will make sense as we go through it. From uh, an overall financial perspective for Suffolk, uh, what I've tried to do here is look at the apportionment of various funds from both capital and revenue perspective uh, received um, either through MHCLG from the Department for Transport over a period of time, uh, but also allocated by the County Council itself. Um, in the past, the Council has decided to top up the external funding it's received uh, through its capital programme. Uh, so you'll see about halfway down that list of uh, funds, uh, 3.05 million pound coming in for a number of years. Uh, and then changing the uh, following year in 2016-17, uh, to around about £10 million split over two years uh, where they decided they want to make a, a heavier investment in highways. Uh, and then in the, uh, um, the election back in 2017 and the run-up to that, they made a manifesto pledge to treat 1,000 roads of miles in Suffolk, uh, culminating in a, a, an allocation of about £21 million, um, which we're steadily working through and on target to deliver. But what that tends to do um, is present a situation where we've got a, a reasonably healthy uh, financial capital program, a revenue program running all the way through to 2018-19, uh, which then starts to tail off quite sadly uh, in future years. And the scenario for 2021-22 uh, is the area of concern that I have, which I'll be exploring further in this presentation. Uh, but clearly that drop off is, is quite sizable. Uh, the £10.16 million pound effectively um, is what I'm hoping I will continue to get in the next two years from uh, County Council for revenue. And at the bottom, we have the uh, transport needs element from the DFT uh, of £17.5 million pound and £3.7 million pound from the incentive fund as Suffolk is a band three authority according to the self-assessment questionnaire process. That does assume that the uh, decision to invest uh, £1 billion per annum um, over six years um, from 2016-17 onwards, sorry, 2015-16 onwards, uh, continues through into 21-22 and beyond. Um, although arguably what we'd hope for is an increase in that overall figure of uh, £21 million, but that clearly remains to be seen. When we look at that from a revenue budget perspective over a period of time, extracting that information from the previous chart, you can see that back in 2010-11, we had a, a revenue allocation of £17.4 million for works. Uh, there is additional funding in there from a revenue perspective for highways, but that's covering the cost of staff. Um, but by 2019-20, this financial year, that's fallen away to £10.16 million. 
uh, and I'll go through shortly the pressures that we're starting to see and again as I said uh, assuming that we continue to have that uh, allocation in future years but you can see in terms of the uh, percentage figures at the top that has meant that since 2010-11 uh, we've actually seen a 41.5% reduction in our revenue budget to maintain um, the infrastructure across uh, Suffolk which has a 6,700 kilometer network just over 4,000 miles and in terms of um, this gives a different perspective that demonstrates uh, in relation down to the bottom we start off at the beginning of the year with an allocation uh, we end up with an end of year actual figure so shown for 17, 18, 18, 19 and just an eight allocation for 19, 20 in terms of for, trying to forward predict. So our staff and overheads uh, have actually gone down quite notably uh, from 17, 18 to 18, 19 and again this year uh, primarily because we created an integrated service uh, that began in September 2017 uh, which enabled us to uh, reconfigure a lot of our organization, reduce our works costs, uh, our staff costs rather, sorry, um, which actually meant that we were able to then push more into uh, the actual works cost for 2017-18. And in addition to that, we generated a lot more income um, through uh, an expansion of the amount of work going on in Suffolk uh, and therefore being able to recover more costs through appropriate charging of temperature traffic regulation orders and the like but you can see that there's a notable drop off in relation to staff works and income between 1718 and 1920 as we predict for this year uh, but clearly there's a as an issue as we move forward in relation to having the amount of work to support the resource that we hold one of the things that um, i've done in suffolk is try to clarify to our members um, how our revenue budget is apportioned. Um, so this was a situation uh, last financial year in terms of how we were looking at um, apportioning our 11.9 million pound uh, budget overall. Uh, you can see at the top um, we have um, our reactive maintenance service. Now, this is very different from uh, a lot of local authorities because um, we decided through the uh, well-managed highway infrastructure approach and the risk-based um, approach to asset management we would alter this resulting in us looking at um, how do we look, respond to some of the in instance out on the network so we've got um, a different type of configuration for the normal emergency category one and category two time scales uh, and arrangements we go from a category one to category seven here in Suffolk category one is a two-hour response for our emergencies Category two is two working days. Three is five working days. Category four is 10 working days. Category five is 20 working days. And category six is 14 working weeks. And category seven is something that falls outside of our intervention criteria, which we all note, uh, and it represents potential future works. So when we went down this route, we looked at what type of work were we carrying out under categories one and two, those two hours and two day repairs, and they tended to be temporary uh, repairs to the network to make it safe. Um, all other type of work, uh, category three to six, we regard as extending the life of our asset. And so whilst historically we would have had somewhere between two and two and a half million pounds sitting in the revenue budget for reactive maintenance, for 18, 19, that got reduced to 600,000 with the other one and a half million or so uh, moving into our capital uh, allocation and being funded from there just in order to actually help balance out our revenue budget so quite a sizable movement um, a notable uh, cost uh, the highest cost sitting in our budget overall there uh, line three is our street lighting energy where we allocated 2.24 million pound for that uh, the total outturn line actually was uh, 2.4 million at the end of last financial year but of that 2.24 million pound that represented about 20 percent of our anticipated budget allocation of 11.9 million pound in 1819 um, but what I've actually done here is broken it all down to uh, indicate how uh, things are apportioned um, there's a, a, a huge amount of issues in here um, in terms of the rate at which we're able to cleanse gullies uh, we do uh, treat a lot of the, uh, the network in terms of winter maintenance covering 51% um, but we don't cut much on um, on our rural network in terms of two cuts on each year on our A and B rates and one cut on our, uh, a C and unclassified routes 
uh, but I guess the, the issue here is in terms of if you look line line 13, the poor old case of um, structures and bridges, uh, effectively with 1,244 bridges, culverts and retaining walls, um, we're having to take a very much a sticking plaster approach there uh, and just really try and hold it together. Uh, or arguably, we could say the much for the rest of the network as well. But certainly in terms of road signs, uh, with less than a pound of sign for post renewal and cleanse for 102,000 uh, signs across the county, uh, 107k doesn't really stretch very far. Uh, and we know that our road markings are vanishing fast. So in some respects, 1819 painted uh, a tale of woe. Um, it's not got any better. Uh, and when we look at our capital allocation, um, in terms of um, bits and pieces moving in from one year to the next, uh, primarily from slippage, et cetera, or a need to um, hold over costs the following year to settle bills from the previous year from our contractor, um, we end up with a, a scenario whereby, uh, again, this looks quite dire. So in terms of the amount of uh, surfacing we do for, um, as I said, our 6,700 kilometre network, to only surface uh, 29 kilometres in one year represents a 231 year life cycle for our roads. Um, and we're not able to hold it together through surface dressing either. I said earlier on the investment of £21 million over three years from the council, so that £7 million is really coming in from Suffolk County Council rather than from uh, DFT allocation. Uh, but even um, achieving two million square metres of surface dressing still relates only to a 17 year cycle. Um, and obviously we, we spend a fair amount on pre-patching to actually make sure we can actually go out and do that scale of um, surface dressing during the course of the year. You'll see in the next line four, uh, where as I said, there's category three to six works, the works that last we would actually carry out within a, a five day window or up to a 14 week window has actually moved into capital because if we, we view that as extending the life because um, they tend to be permanent repairs. So if there's new material going down, it is a capital uh, allocation. Footways looks absolutely dire. Uh, the ability to, on average, resurface every 449 years. Um, quite incredible we seem to have come up with that figure, but that's what it equates to. Uh, and when we look down at replacing safety barriers on line nine, uh, expecting those to last for 375 years is really pushing the, the lifespan of steel, um, let alone the, the instances where some of those safety barriers are on wooden posts. Um, and then equally in terms of our bridges program, um, able to renew our structures every 270 years, 78 years, uh, really does push it. Um, and those cycles are based upon what we estimated back in 2016, and we set up our highway infrastructure asset management plan, where we estimated the value of our infrastructure asset to be 7.6 billion pound. Um, it doesn't go very far. So in terms of trying to work out um, in detail um, what would be the impact of our current funding levels, we started to look at all the different elements of our infrastructure. Uh, on this sheet, we cover off road markings, uh, traffic signals and road signs. So in there, you'll see the different types of assets, the life cycle in the fourth column across, uh, how long we expect it to last for, in other words. Um, what we've valued uh, are those particular assets to be, uh, what we have in terms of our current budget, um, the yearly budget we would really need to look after that asset properly. Uh, that gives you a budget shortfall per year. So we then look forward to five years time to think, okay, well, if we spend at our current level, how much would we need to spend in 2024 just to get us back to uh, today's status in terms of the standard of our assets? So that applies for, for those particular types of asset. On the next sheet, you've got carriageways, footways, and street lighting. So some fairly sizable figures coming in for carriageways. Um, you know, by, in five years' time, our road assets will have devalued by 110 million pound. Our footways by 62, 63 million pound. Um, a significant cost sitting in there. Um, and running all the way through, picking up on structures and also our public rights away bridges uh, and other infrastructure as well. We've included that in, in here. Um, drainage and, and such like is, is sitting within the carriageway figures. Um, so that's a, a run through, which obviously you can look through in greater detail at your own pace. But in terms of um, overall, we've then tried to summarise that uh, and the £8.259 million, that should be a billion pound actually, 
that's correct, sorry, many. Um, that is our current estimate uh, of what our highway assets actually come to um, in terms of those different aggregations. So for that 8.3 billion pound uh, asset, spending at the current rate in 2024, just to get it back to where it is today, we'd need to spend 235 billion pound extra, uh, which is very scary. So using some of this information to try and work out uh, what should be the, the correct level of funding that we should be uh, receiving to, to maintain the network. Um, I've shown on this slide the different life expectancies, typical life expectancies of a number of different assets, um, ranging from 120 years from our bridges down to four to five years for our road markings. And then from that moved into uh, a comparison of our total capital and revenue funding now, in terms of the electrical energy uh, for this year, we're expecting that to climb yet again to uh, nearly 2.8 million pound. Um, so if we take that out and the cost of cutting our grass and looking after the trees, etc., we're left with a, a net funding of 34.9 million pound this year uh, to replace our 8.26 billion pound highway infrastructure asset, um, uh, which effectively means that we're replacing our asset every 236 years. And over the next two years, as our funding falls away, uh, we end up in a scenario whereby it will be a replacement cycle every 311 years. And I know from counterparts uh, across ADAPT um, that um, figures ranging around about 250 to 400 years isn't um, uh, abnormal. Uh, in actual fact, I think in Bristol, the replacement cycle is nearer 500 years. Um, so in terms of trying to then take that back to what should our funding level be, um, there's a small calculation there that picks up on that 34.9 um, net funding for replacement, um, compared to the 236 years to the standard 60 years average, um, and adding some of those electrical energy and soft estates costs back in, suggests that my annual capital and revenue budget to maintain my network should be 142 million pound, uh, not 39. Uh, which indicates that it's about three and a half times, 3.6 times our current value. Um, so going back to the capital allocation of a billion pound a year, would it be reasonable to ask for 3.6 billion a year? Difficult to say. Um, but the, the issue here is this is a lot of assumptions in here, um, which is why the bottom, the bottom line indicated, is there a better way of identifying necessary spend levels? So there are different ways of looking at this. So we can then start to look at um, the issue of what has the um, Asheville Industry Alliance Alarm Survey thrown up uh, and the information in there is that to clear the backlog for highways um, around about 9.79 billion pound would need to be spent across the country um, which given that we actually have uh, 1 billion pound at the moment um, really from that needs based uh, approach and the in incentive fund um, it means that it would still take about a decade to clear that backlog um, but the, uh, that 9.79 billion pound doesn't include for things such as bridges. Um, and so it's, it's an undervaluation of what we need. Um, and to actually try and get to a steady state investment level, you can't really achieve that until you've cleared your backlog. And that's quite critical in terms of the day-to-day -day channels that we have of looking off the network. And in Suffolk, we suffered immeasurably with the beast from the east. Um, and uh, I think road networks across the country uh, remain particularly vulnerable to uh, a further severe winter. Um, whilst we've actually taken a lot of measure to protect it through surface dressing, it's not going to hold together. So in terms of looking at road condition, um, this is again extracted from the um, Asheville Industry Alliance Alarm Report. Um, I've pulled these figures out for principal roads, non-principal roads and unclassified. Uh, what is classified as uh, green, the carriage went a good state to repair, amber, where some work is needed, which we interpret here as being the area where surface dressing is required, and the red condition where we consider that either resurfacing or deep inlay or reconstruction is required. Um, and as you can see from our figures for, uh, for this year, um, in terms of our split between those different types of category, across the principal, non-principal and unclassified. We're fairly average in terms of condition compared to the rest of the country through the AIA report. So on that basis, we feel as though Suffolk is quite a good proxy um, for 
uh, assessment for the situation nationally. And in terms of asset management cycle, obviously what we're looking at is making sure we intervene at the right time, uh, absolutely critical um, in terms of being able to do that, uh, which has a, a play equally between the revenue account and the uh, capital allocation. And we've done some work on what the comparative uh, repair costs are, the different types of treatment. Um, and obviously at the top, the most favoured approach is surface dressing. If we can do that and get in there before there's a need to pre-patch, it's obviously cheaper. But if we then start to get into um, just the top inlay surfacing, uh, you're starting to see a sizable jump up, four times the cost of surface dressing, which is why in terms of the investment from the authorities being focused on surface dressing to get as much of the network sealed as we possibly can. Um, and in terms of response to the beast from the east end, we're looking down the bottom end of £95 a square metre for fixing our potholes on a category one and two basis. So um, an interesting interpretation of how we've done that. We've also managed to keep our costs down by using something called our 15 minute temporary obstruction uh, traffic management approach, whereby we don't go for road closures wherever possible. We'll hold the traffic for 15 minutes just to enable us to do some work. And that's pretty effective on keeping our costs down for surface dressing. So whether well, that compares with anyone else, I don't really know. But equally as part of the argument for investing uh, an extra seven million pound a year, um, on uh, achieving the uh, 1,000 miles of treated carriageway, um, we try to demonstrate the impact of uh, wh what happens if you don't spend a million pound or if you don't spend the seven million pound effectively that was going to come out of our um, program uh, a few years ago. And as you can see from the, um, the red line uh, in terms of the amount you're actually spending on capital investment, that rapidly gets overtaken uh, by the cost of uh, carrying out more and more repairs as the network slowly falls apart. The reactive maintenance costs start to climb quite uh, uh, worryingly uh, and effectively within six years, you're spending as much on um, renewing or repairing the network as you would be as you surface treating. So um, that has proved to be quite a strong argument, but has a, a big, big role to play in terms of thinking about what are the implications if you stop treating your road network in terms of surfacing and surface dressing. So rolling this through, uh, this uh, image shows what's going on with our red condition roads over a period of time uh, in, in relation to our asset management approach here in Suffolk, looking after our A roads, B roads, C roads and, and unclassified. Um, a general trend has been downwards. Uh, we're conscious that um, this is the type of data every local authority submits to the Department of Transport and based upon the downward trends of our uh, lines and the downward trends of many other lines uh, of equivalent from uh, local authorities across the country, the interpretation of the Department of Transport has been that overall the country's road network has been improving. Um, so in terms of here, um, in relation to trying to keep on top of this, uh, I've looked at what the recovery cost would be in terms of total investment to clear just from a surfacing perspective. This assumes we can actually just do a surfacing rather, rather than deep inlay or reconstruction, around about £155 million pound to clear that lot altogether. Uh, we have been holding fairly steady on our A, Bs and Cs over the last few years. So, you know, the issue there is, OK, well, what do we do to try and drive down our unclassified network? And I've indicated um, maybe about £5.8 million pound a year. So we'd actually want to actually have six million pounds spent just on surfacing, just to try and get this down to a more manageable level. But the real issue really sits in the uh, amber condition uh, in terms of our A's, B's and C's, C's are shown here, not our unclassified. Um, quite worrying that uh, the figures range between about 20% and 30% of the network. This is the stuff that is vulnerable to attack from a severe winter. This is why we saw an immense breakdown of the, the road surface across the country in 2018. Uh, so again, looking at uh, what we've invested, around right about £13 million pound a year on, uh, on surface dressing to help drive those figures downwards. That's an indication of cost overall. Street lighting energy, I mentioned earlier on, a uh, real issue here where uh, we experienced 11% increase. Uh, in our costs, we can invest in some of our um, changing of our low pressure sodium lamps um, to uh, LED, making some changes within the lantern to convert them to an LED lamp, but also converting the rest of the stock. So uh, as a bare minimum, 6.6 .6 million pound investment 
uh, needed to actually get all of our lighting to LED. Uh, but if we did all that, we effectively dropped from the blue straight brown line down to the red line, and within a matter of years, uh, we're back up to the same cost in terms of energy. So the return on investment um, is not great. Uh, but more worryingly, uh, if you look at the table at the bottom, um, if we don't do anything uh, in terms of our street lighting, uh, our current energy bill for last year, 2.478 million pound, will rise by 2029-30 if it grows 11% per annum to 7.9 million pound. That would be about 80% of our current revenue budget. Uh, and that's why this is an area where we're looking at what can we do? Do we invest? Um, to try and offset some of those future costs. Bridges, um, as I said earlier on, we've got sticking plaster approach on our revenue side, uh, 1.8 million pounds or, uh, or so um, being spent on looking after our, our bridges on the capital spend basis. Um, we're just not able to tackle some of the backlog. Uh, the picture shows one of our public rights away bridges, about 200,000 pounds just to repair that one bridge. Uh, and according to some uh, benchmarking we've done, uh, sitting sixth worst amongst a, a group of a number of authorities. So this is a situation which is uh, die across the country. Maybe the challenge fund uh, third tranche for this year um, might give us an opportunity to tackle some of those bridges, but the downward decline in our bridge stock is of major concern. <clears throat> so when I start to look at the, uh, the situation overall, um, I have to look at how can I manage our budgets moving forward. And you'll see in this table um, a more simplified and more recent version of what's been going on in terms of uh, the investment coming in from needs based and incentive fund from the DFT at 21 and a quarter million pounds value sitting at the top. Um, the rollout from uh, the County Council trying to achieve its, um, its total investment over the uh, over the four year period to achieve a thousand miles treated. Pot on action fund goes up and down like a yo yo, but we don't know if we're going to get anything in 2021 or 2122. Um, we're all very grateful for the additional 9.67 million pounds that we received uh, from the Chancellor back in October uh, of last year uh, to enable us to put some uh, an injection of funding in to deal with some of our more major problems, particularly in relation to drainage across the county, schemes costing a quarter of a million pound a time. Um, we did have some uh, carry forward from um, a previous year, which we were able to slip into uh, 1920, um, uh, as well as our slippage overall. So that's meant that we've actually had ended up in a fairly healthy situation for 1920, but m only because of money slipping from 1819 where we couldn't spend it. But the, the real uh, issue sits in uh, that bottom line in terms of our reduction from 38 million pound uh, capital for this year to just 25 next year and then down to 21 the year after that. So my, the challenge I've had is trying to work out how that is then apportioned in the same way as I've showed for 1819. So this is the way we've gone about it. We've looked at where all the pressure points are um, and the only capacity we have um, to reduce our funding sits in those top lines in relation to um, surfacing, surface dressing and surface dressing pre-patching. Um, so I would look to have to cut down my surface surfacing budget for next year down to three million pound. Um, I would only look to surface dress just to finish off our thousand miles, 4.75 million pound. Um, knowing I've got such a shortfall in 21-22, there's no point in me spending any money on pre pre-patching for surface dressing, that is zeroes next year. Uh, and so in 21-22, those both zero out. So effectively, 20, about 20 million pounds worth of expenditure on major carriageway maintenance in 1920 becomes three million pound in two years time. Hence, I managed to budget uh, balance out my budgets for uh, 1920, 2021 and 21-22. Um, consequences are dire. And I'll come on to that later. In terms of our revenue expenditure profiling, this slide was very much to help the um, MHCLG uh, guys actually understand where the pressures actually lie, but also internally to try to flag up to our members uh, what's actually gone on here. We've dropped down from 11.9 million pound revenue budget last year to 10.1 
uh, on the basis that they felt that we could take some money out of uh, various lines of our budgets. Um, we've, we're working to those budget lines. However, we have in the approaches at the moment, the most sizable one being um, just over £800,000 for street lighting energy just hurtling out the roof. Um, but equally in terms of some of the other costs that we're just not able to recover. Um, last winter was quite mild for us at £1.925 million, um, but we've only been able to allocate £1.7 million for our budget for winter maintenance for this year. So we predict that even with a mild winter, a yeah, quarter of a million pound overspend. So that suggests there's a pressure this year, um, irrespective of whatever else might be happening on some of those zeros at the moment, of about £1.3 million. Pound. So um, as a starting point, that suggests that £10.1 million pound revenue budget is not sustainable. That needs to be at least 11 and a half just to hold things together. But even that really isn't enough because we're not apportioning our budget correctly as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we are spending capital funding to prop up our revenue budget that needs to be redistributed and spent in the right area. So hence my suggestion that um, in reality, um, looking back to um, a few years ago, uh, an increase of 50% in revenue budget would be appropriate, if not restoring ourselves back to the 2010-11 uh, figure of 17 million. Uh, obviously, there's a 41.5% reduction from 2010 to now. Um, but if you go from 10 to 17 million pounds, that's a 70% increase. Hence why that figure is uh, suggested as the uh, extent to which revenue budgets need to climb. And again, trying to think about, okay, well, um, in the real world, if I was trying to achieve steady state for all of our assets, um, I would certainly be looking at around about 20 million pound overall investment on an ongoing basis. Um, hence the figures of 6 million for surfacing, five and a quarter for surface dressing, seven and a quarter for surface dressing, uh, so sorry, five and three quarter million pounds surface dressing pre-patching. Uh, and and you know, at the end of the day, trying to push up our program patching program a bit as well, um, because we know that we're not dealing with edge of carriageway deterioration because our fairly narrow roads down in Suffolk uh, are taking a bit of a hammering on the edges. They are starting to freight and looking around the country, that's also the case primarily because the volume of traffic moving onto uh, unclassified network, uh, but also the size of farm machinery as well. So really having a, a really big impact. Um, I've only tripled our road markings replacement program from a 300 to, to a thousand pound, uh, to a million pound, sorry. Um, but even that's not going to be enough. Uh, we think it should be about two million pound just to look after our A road network. Um, but obviously lifting Footway work spend from a million pound to three million pound. We've actually got a chance of driving down that replacement of every 449 years to about every 150 years. And there's a success story, story just around the corner, I guess. Um, but looking through, um, investing in the LEDs, uh, investing in, in changing our SOX lanterns to LED lanterns, investing in our lamps, trying to drive this through. But ultimately, um, I've reapportioned this as best I can. It's far from ideal. Um, I'd still look to push more into many of those lines um, just to actually be able to maintain them properly rather than still taking pretty much a, um, a sticking plaster approach. Um, you'll see a line in, in this slide for a local management overhead of four million pound. Uh, and the previous slide, Roadmark, uh, where are we? About halfway down, local management overhead, 815,000. Um, that's because in terms of delivering the contract, uh, that's the level of uh, additional top-up support we have from our service uh, partner, um, about 4.8 million pound, just to make sure we've got the staff to deliver this service. So it's a it's a quite key thing, and we've we've pulled it out of this role and actually trying to lose it in amongst all the other uh, budget lines. But the key thing here is our current total. Um, if we look at 21-22. Um, in terms of our uh, needs-based funding and incentive fund, that will drop down to 21.238 um, million. Um, in terms of how that profile shows, so an additional investment suggested of extra spend of 21.8 million pound. So effectively, um, what this demonstrates is that to get to an intuitive steady state, the amount of funding coming through from central government, that one billion pound a year, needs to at least double to two billion pound. Um, 
that's that's my perspective on this um, but obviously the key thing here was to try and uh, actually really road test that to make sure that's stacked up so we've done some scenario testing in terms of using the HMO character rate life cycle toolkit um, <clears throat> really interesting um, piece of uh, software to use pumped in are what we're doing this year um, a spend on surfacing of 3.1 million pound surface dressing of 16 million pound and, and um, that's including our pre-patching um, and about 3.8 million pound on, on program patching just to help keep some of the other network together um, uh, <clears throat> but if we if we roll that through over the uh, a 10 year period to look at what happens to A's, B's, C's and unclassifieds um, you can actually see I've, I've drawn a table together here which shows what the situation is in 2019-20 and what the equipment situation is in 28-29. Uh, um, in terms of the modelling here we do see a bit of a worsening on our A's and B's but pretty much everything else improves uh, which suggests that the level of funding we've got at the moment including the injection of seven million pound a year from the authority is helping us get to an improved condition on a road network albeit slowly because some of those um, those date those figures in that table don't change very much overall so arguably it's a holding steady situation and that then gets reflected through in terms of what it looks like in relation to uh, what is in the red category what's in the green category um, and in terms of how we've interpreted this the amber uh, is very much a situation where you need to go and surface dress and pre-patch uh, the light green is where you need to probably just go and surface dress without the need to pre-patch uh, but overall you can actually see that the um, the amount of solid green does improve which is the the critical aspect from from our perspective so we know we don't do we're doing the right thing uh, in terms of validating our, our work at the moment in terms of our investment profile if we now step forward to um, to 2021, uh, which is a scaled down profile of what we have this year, um, in terms of um, a big chunk taken out of surface dressing, we're not going to pre-patch for next year. Um, we can only afford about two and a quarter million pound for surfacing next year, holding steady on the program patching. There's a drop off there in terms of how much we're spending overall. And you'll see that in the table on the right hand side, uh, a summary of what's shown in the bigger table down below. Um, <clears throat> the network deteriorates quite extensively um, in terms of red and green uh, condition uh, only the amber seems to improve on that basis because we're target still to continue to target our surface dressing we're not doing enough on the uh, on the surfacing in that area um, so a, a fall off there so a, a worsening from uh, option one so we know what we're doing next year won't be enough and again that gets translated through in terms of the figures here for our A's in the top left hand corner, B's top right, C roads in the bottom left and unclassified in the bottom right. So a worsening in terms of if we we're able to continue through at the level we're spending next year which would be a, about a four million pound spend from the county council. Just not enough to hold the network together over a 10 year period. So then I, I look through it at 21-22 where effectively all I have to spend on carriageways for combined surfacing and surface dressing is three million pound. Slight increase in the program patching uh, amount because we'll actually be trying to chase our tails uh, and fill in the potholes that are forming because we're not surface dressing and surfacing at a fast enough rate. And I guess the issue there is looking at that table on the right hand side, everything has gone red. Uh, and if we look at the amount of, of our network that's actually moved from reasonable red condition figures uh, to go to f virtually 40% across the entire network um, fills me with dread because that essentially means that cyclists won't be able to use the roads, um, buses will probably be uh, breaking down all the time as will uh, local uh, um, vehicles transporting goods around the country, home to school transport is going to be affected, mills and wheels be affected. Uh, essentially the, we have a network that becomes a no-go zone um, and that really does play out when you look at uh, what this shows for option three in terms of that spend profile, the amount of dark green, in other words the, the extent of the road network that's in good condition, not in need of intervention, down at a really paltry level 
and you can see that in terms of the figures on the right hand side of that top table just around about 30 percent or so of the network in green compared to anything between 58 and, and 77 percent a real dire situation that is what is coming over the hill from our interpretation of the amount of funding that's available in two years time based upon uh, allocation of the ongoing allocation potentially of a billion pound a year from central government um, so clearly not enough so if we step through to option four uh, which is what we call as the steady red uh, which is what we're trying to achieve by investing as it shows there uh, with, with yeah it was an intuitive modeling of about 19 uh, million pound overall for 2021 slight adaptation in terms of how we spend it on the, between the machine surfacing and surface dressing um, and some of that machine surfacing includes uh, deep inlay and reconstruction um, using that the right way uh, we're in a situation whereby the entire road network um, either holds steady or substantially improves so that figure of um, 20 million pound a year investment um, is absolutely key and that can be reflected in terms of what's happening with our road network overall uh, A's and B's are steadying um, C's a slight improvement and, and unclassified still a long way off uh, if we look at the amount of the um, C network the unclassified network um, we're only holding it steady in terms of the amount in red 24% that's where we are at the moment and the same could be said for the C's and the B's so it's actually making sure that if we did have a severe winter over the next 10 years with this investment profile the road network isn't going to fall apart as it did in 2018 quite a key factor so in trying to draw all this together into some sort of conclusion based upon uh, what I've presented here uh, if we look at the whole of government accounts approach in terms of our uh, asset value of 8.3 billion pound for our, our infrastructure here in asset uh, and working through in terms of what we've currently got for funding that suggests the amount of combined rare capital and revenue spend should be about 3.6 times current level um, and my view is that we'll we'll never get to a point where that is uh, forthcoming and equally um, uh, in terms of I think we're smarter than that I think we can actually eke out the life of many of our assets but then if we look at the um, Ashford Industry Alliance alarm survey report um, there's the issue of clearing that backlog over a 10-year period uh, which as I said that's a billion pound a year on top of the billion pound we're already spending that's two billion pound it's doubling it um, so uh, that would suggest that you know, doubling the amount of capital spend is, is uh, about where we need to be and the HMET, HMET based uh, approach in terms of using that um, that tool the HMET uh, carriageway tool equally suggests that um, doubling of the investment um, is absolutely key um, but as I said there was a rider doubling of capital investment means that the road surface arguably combated but little else is addressed uh, because again our focus and our analysis in this has been on roads um, it's not been on the rest of the assets um, and we do still have this issue about the energy cost uh, having the potential for spiraling out of control um, equally uh, we know that in terms of our road signs um, for this year we are not cleaning any road signs we are replacing very few signs the only ones that we are actually replacing uh, if they get knocked down uh, are our mandatory signs or the advisory regulate uh, uh, advisory and uh, non-regulatory signs are receiving no attention unless we can pick that up as part of a scheme um, we're not spending as much money as we should do on looking after our vegetation um, that's a, a, an ongoing issue uh, and we've seen our spend revenue spend on that climb from about a quarter of a million pound a few years ago to about just over 600,000 this year just to stay on top of the network in a safe manner um, so there, there are pressures left right and center uh, in terms of this and our revenue situation says there is skewed by the virtue of the fact that we've moved what would ordinarily be reactive maintenance funded by revenue for our uh, intervention type work um, 
our category three to category six um, that's in the wrong position arguably or that's what um, um, SIPFA people might argue um, we are having to work on the on the edges of what is practical uh, and permissible rather than what is uh, ideally specified and equally in terms of bridge inspections we've started to move some of those into capital as well because we're having to deal with those as a project each time rather than actually dealing with them necessarily uh, on a regular basis so as it indicates there um, there are a significant revenue pressures sitting in um, uh, our uh, current budgets and the table at the bottom indicates what happens if uh, we don't uh, invest properly uh, using that um, ski slope representation for what are the impacts are if you don't treat uh, for a million pound investment each year on highways um, which is the uh, fourth line the non prevention repairs that sky starts to skyrocket that's the extent to which we have to spend an awful lot more just on filling potholes so if you imagine a, a network that's got 40 percent of it uh, in red condition it's going to be the case of filling potholes everywhere uh, and if we work on the basis of our ski slope uh, diagram that suggests we'd be spending 61.4 million pound extra just looking after uh, and holding together the network rather than actually spending it wisely on surfacing or surface stretching on a capital investment program uh, and equally in terms of um, the street lighting energy cost as I said rising from 2.7 predicted for this year to 7.9 so by the time we get to um, 25, 26, we've got um, about uh, 500,000 surplus, and that's to be spent on everything else apart from street lighting energy um, and carriageway repairs. Uh, so that's for all our drainage, gully cleansing, group cutting, uh, vegetation, etc. And that's all that's left. 26, 27, the graph of doom comes home. Thank you.